Hello and welcome back to the channel. This evening we're going to be looking back on uh, Leeds back in the Premier League after 16 years um, today. Went to Anfield, played really, really well, but ultimately we fell short going down 4-3 to the defending champions Liverpool. So a quick look back in the game just and just some thoughts and takeaways from it. Um, so obviously 1-0 down, penalty. I... I didn't think it was a penalty. Um, the referee seemed sure. Um, obviously, there's been so much messing about with the penalty rule in the last last wee while um, with handballs. Um, the ball was hit very hard, hit off his knee, bounced up one day his hand. His hand was obviously out from his body, so presumably that's why it was given. But you know, to me, it was uh, it was soft. It was unfortunate um, and disappointing. Um, Obviously, just a few minutes back into the Premier League, it had the potential to go a bit flat. But um, up, actually, up until that point, I thought we actually looked a wee bit soft. Liverpool pretty much just had the ball. And while we, we ran out to them and pressed them, there didn't seem to be anybody willing to put an actual challenge on them. But um, it was maybe a, a reflection of the game as a whole. Um, obviously, Salah scored the penalty then, so straight away 1-0 down. But you have to give the lads credit from the um from how they responded. Um obviously with the goal disallowed, which in, in hindsight you know was right. Um but a few minutes after that then good pass from Phillips out to the out to the left wing. Horrison from what from there it's all Jack Horrison, brilliant, fantastic play, um from the on loan man. Um took on Trent Alexander Arnold, who everybody tells us is the best full back, best right back in the world. Um, and Harrison, you know, completely had him on toast more than once during the game too, in fact. Um, but brilliant, uh, brilliant touch, took it inside and brilliant finish. Very, very impressed by, by the goal. Um, obviously then the next goal in the game was Van Dyke. Um, it was, it was poor defending from, from our perspective. It, it was, you know, these teams, they, they, Try to make blocks and and stuff on uh, on on free kicks and corners, and uh, caught he got uh, he got caught out um, was blocked off, and Van Dyke obviously got a run then and you know it was it was easy from there. Um, one thing I would say is obviously if that goal was fair enough, then the one that was disallowed later on in the game, um, Van Dijk again finished it, but it was the same situation where a player was blocked off, and on that occasion the free kick was given. So it's difficult, you know. You're kind of wondering like which, you know, what what is the actual right rule? Um, it seemed to me like it was pretty much the same stuff. Um, after that, then we got the got the equaliser. Um, whenever I was actually like whenever I was watching the game in real time, I've seen Shirt Dallas going through the middle. And uh, he just played this like random, stupid, pointless ball, like just hoofed it up in the air, and it just you just felt like wow, it was such a waste. But obviously Van Dyke made a complete hurlux of it, and uh, Bamford, whenever he was was given the opportunity, in fairness to him, he took it, um, which is good to see. Doubled his Premier League tally for his uh, for his career. Um, but again, we couldn't uh, we couldn't really keep it keep ourselves level um 3-2 um it was a brilliant 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 goal from Salah you know he took he took he finished it really well the goalkeeper was quite unlucky as well cuz like whenever you watch the replays from from the certain angle like the goalkeeper was right up close to the top corner like there seemed to be about a football width of a gap that he could put it into and it just so happened that Salah put it there but we do have to mention obviously that um Pascal strike it was disappointing from him um like one of the sort of very basic rules of defending is when the ball comes in you put it back where it came from and for some reason he decided to try and flick it on and flick it away and you know you just you don't do that um obviously just before half time as well I, I feel I should I should mention the possible penalty for us um it would have been soft but you know purely based on the rules and as such as I understand them the facts are, the um, the Leeds man got the ball. The Leeds man touched the ball, and then there was a contact from the Liverpool player. The two players went for the ball together, and the Leeds man won it. 
Um, so, you know, if he had to give a penalty there, I don't think Liverpool could have said too much about it. But and then ultimately, he didn't give it. VR, VAR didn't give it either. So, you know, we move on. Um, second half then. Brilliant, brilliant equaliser from Click, who I have to say I thought throughout the game was brilliant, but I'll touch on that in, a, in another wee minute. Um, but yeah, it was a really good goal. Took the ball, <laughs> took the ball beautifully, controlled it, and just the the volley to finish it. Then, um, obviously, then we sort of backs to the wall, defending deep. We just seemed to be getting deeper and deeper and deeper, and you just felt that Liverpool could score and our best hope was that the final whistle came just before they did you know it just looked like it was a battle between Liverpool and the club at that stage and that we were always going to well under the pressure that we were under but you know you just kind of hope that it would get to the, the 90 minutes and, and out of time before before we concede it but unfortunately the ball fell Rodrigo on his debut pro just a forwards tackle really um, he sort of put his foot out he, he th I think he thought the player was going to hit the ball first time and he took the touch and obviously then went past him and, and he took him down so there's no complaints about that one it was a definite penalty um, but yeah so just a couple of individual performances I want to, I want to talk this small amount about um, starting off um, in defence for us Pascal Struik um, ultimately he was disappointing for Salah's, what was it, Salah's second, it was their, their third, but Salah's second, I think. Um, he was really disappointing for that, the header was poor, um, I've already touched on that. But overall, his stats in the game were actually quite good. Um, four tackles, he had two interceptions, 11 uh, clearances, um, two blocked shots, um, and then I was actually quite impressed by him on the ball. Eight out of 12 long passes were successful an 88.1% pass accuracy, um, which is good. You know, everybody talked about Koch and says that he was going to be the guy that, that would come to the club and be the passer, but um, he actually I thought he'd done good. I thought he had a great game um, outside the um, the obvious mistake. Um, as I already mentioned, the thought uh, Click thought Click was brilliant. Um, really, really impressed by him. Um, he got the goal, um, which was a great goal. He won a header, um, he had a successful dribble, four tackles, one interception, two clearances, two blocked shots, and 86.7% pass accuracy. Clegg's one of these guys, he came to the club and he, you know, he, he didn't start off particularly well, but over the last wee while he's, he's got very, very good. He was brilliant last season and he, he started really well today. Um, you know, he was he's up against, you know, the champions, champions of England, the best team in England, they were the best team in Europe last year, or well, a year and a bit, whatever it was going to, um, yeah, I was, I was pleased with him, um, I definitely thought he was, he was our, probably in my opinion, our best player today, um, I know there's a few we're talking about, like Ealing and, and uh, a couple of others, but I thought Click was brilliant, I thought he was our man of the match. Um, on the other hand, disappointing day for Pablo Hernandez. Felt a wee bit like the game passed him by. Um, I think the way the game, you know, it's easy to say now, but the way the game went, I think it might have been easier, it might have been better if we had I had Tyler Roberts on from the start. And then whenever the game went against us, where, you know, we needed like the last 15 minutes or so, we were pushing... Um, like kind of as, as the game went on, I felt like Pablo would have been better at this in the second half, you know, where there's maybe a bit more space and stuff. Um, obviously, Leeds had like 50, 52, I think it was, percent of possession. And, you know, there's no reason why that Pablo couldn't have, couldn't have produced some magic. But, you know, I, I don't know. Just I'm a wee bit worried, obviously. He's 35, stepping up again, um, up into the Premier League. Has he has he still got it? I don't know. I don't know whether he does. He didn't show very much today. But it's an it's an early season and, and as I said in, you know, my video earlier, Liverpool um away won't define Leeds United season. So there's no reason why it should define Pablo's. But I did think he had a poor game. I did think that he could have been much better than what he was. Um but uh as I say, you know, at the end of the game, you would have liked to have had him, you know, in the certain positions. I think the way the game was and the fact that we were, you know, there were times where Liverpool had us under pressure. Um, Tyler Roberts' pace would have, would have maybe helped us a bit more. But 
you know, Pablo's done an awful lot for Leeds, so I'm not going to criticise him too much, but he did disappoint me today. But, you know, we'll see. Um, there'll be plenty of other games where Pablo can show us what he's made of. Um, so, ultimately, there's pride, but there's disappointment. Um, I thought we played very well. Um, I, I did genuinely fear going to Anfield, first game of the season, just getting run all over. And sometimes it looked like it might have been that way. You know, in the first couple of minutes, I was nervous. But the lads, the lads, they've done us proud. Um, made a good effort, but, um, you know, obviously, you know, you can say, oh, they done well, whatever. But we lost the game, and I'm glad to see Bielsa, you know, saying that he wasn't taking any pride in the performance because, you know, there was no points won. And I, lo I love that attitude that you get some managers... Um, like Guardiola is one who like you know like if your team if the team plays really well but they lose you know he's he's taking pride and he's like ah oh, you know but like you know we'll, we've learned lessons here and we've done that we'll do this and we'll do that you know the hell with that win the match that's that's what football's about football's about winning and we want the win um hopefully we'll get an opportunity now to win um win a game sort of we've got three games where we could probably pick something up now and um, coming up we've got Hull in the the midweek I think in the is it the Carabao Cup um and then next weekend we're at home to Fulham that's obviously going to be a proper you know both sides coming up both sides lost this weekend um so we'll be we'll be desperate and they'll be desperate to get points and um, the week after that Sheffield United um I think I would wouldn't be surprised you know now that we're seeing matches now that Bielsa is getting to look and see what he has I wouldn't be surprised to see a wee bit more business over the next couple of weeks. Um, I do think probably there may be a need for someone, you know, to take some of the pressure off Pablo. I don't know whether Tyler Roberts is good enough or whether Bielsa thinks he's good enough, but I definitely think we need somebody for that role so is that Pablo can um, possibly be be used more as a someone to come on and and uh, make an impact later on in the game you know as, as obviously as the as players tire and the pace slows a wee bit it might suit him more I think we've seen how good he was in the run in last season you know the last lot of games where he was coming off the bench um, fresh and he was able to play and play to the best of his ability and you know hopefully he can have that kind of same impact in the Premier League this season but we'll uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes I expect in the in the cup game during midweek that we'll probably see the likes of Rodrigo start. There'll probably be more changes. There'll be a few guys they'll want to get minutes into their legs. Um, obviously, you know, with such a unique set of circumstances this year and this summer. But uh, we'll see how that goes, and uh, hopefully we can uh, we can set up a tie. I think it's like maybe West Ham or someone if we if we beat Hull. So um, West Ham or Charlton possibly. But um, we'll see how it goes. Obviously today there's a lot of positives to be taken. Didn't get didn't get any points, um, but there were certainly positives in the performance and things that you know against the weaker team. Hopefully, we'll we'll be able to play to that same standard and get the points the next time. Um, but definitely, so, some some amount of pride. Um, but ultimately, playing well gets you so far. You want to get points on the board, and that's what we need to do. Thanks for listening and I'll be back in contact soon. Don't forget to hit the wee um, subscribe button and like the video if you can because it makes such a difference on the, on YouTube just the way uh, just the way their their systems work. But thanks for listening.